Today we're going to talk about multiplying fractions. Our I can say that it is I can multiply fractions. This is a fifth grade standard, but we're going to show you one more component of it. It's called cross canceling. I absolutely love cross canceling. Cross canceling it will make your world a million times easier. The key to cross canceling is knowing your multiplication facts. The, and the fun thing about cross canceling is it takes away lots of steps. There's not as much work if you can cross cancel. Okay? Some of you are going to hate it. Just because I know how some of you are. If you hate it, you hate it. I'm not going to force it down your throat. But just know if you refuse to learn it, you're going to have more steps. Okay? I'm not going to force it on you. But you're still going to have to put it in simplest terms, and it's going to be more work on you, and it's going to be bigger numbers. And it's going to take longer. It's going to take longer. Cross-canceling is quick, small numbers, no simplifying at all, hardly. Okay? All right. So multiplying fractions. These are the first blanks on your uh, note sheet. So you need to fill in the blanks. They're bold and underlined. Your first blank says, in order to multiply fractions and mixed numbers, each number must be written as a proper or improper fraction. Improper fraction is when the number is bigger in the numerator than in the denominator. So remember, fractions like fractions. They don't like mixed numbers. So we got to change them. Next, mixed numbers must be converted to improper fractions. Converted means change. And whole numbers must be written over one. What I mean by that is if I have 5 times 2 thirds, I have to place a 1 under the 5. What I mean by that? What method do I use when I'm trying to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions? What method do we use? Butterfly. I heard it. Around the world. I have, if I have one and two thirds, I have to go around the world. When I go around the world, I do what first? You know. I multiply and then I add. add. So your steps. Change each mixed number to an improper fraction. You do that by going around the world. Then you multiply the numerators. Numerator is top or bottom? Top. Then you multiply the denominators. Top or bottom? Bottom. bottom. Then I simplify. What do I use to simplify? The slide method. We use the slide to simplify. When multiplying and dividing fractions, we multiply straight across and we divide straight across. When we add and subtract, do we do anything to the denominators? No. Do I have to find a common denominator when I multiply? No, because I'm, I'm going to just use the numbers and then multiply straight across. Okay? All right. If you don't have the blanks already, they're going to you can they're on the next slide as well. So we have two problems to start us off with, multiplying. We've got two-thirds times four-fifths. We multiply straight across. Two times four is eight. 3 times 5 is 15. If I place 8 and 15 in the slide, is there anything I could pull out of them? Do they have any common factors? No. No, they don't. So guess what? This is its simplest term. This is its smallest term. It can't go any lower. Does everybody see how to understand that? If I can't pull a factor out, then that's as low as it can go. Next one we have 6 sevenths times 2 sevenths. 6 times 2 is 12. 7 times 7 is 49. 
If I put 12 and 49 no. in this slide. Can't get nothing out of it. Will two work? Um, no. uh, 49 is odd. Three won't work. Three would work for 12, but it doesn't work for 49. Five doesn't work for either of them. Seven doesn't work. 11, 13, oh, anything? No. That's as low as it can go. So 12 over 49 is my final answer. Everybody good there? Mm -hmm. Just multiply straight across, right? We good? Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful. Now is when the fun begins, my favorite part. I think so. All right, this is called cancel common factors, or we call it cross canceling. What I want you to do, I want you to put your pencil down first, and I want you to watch me do it. Then worry about writing, okay? Watch first, then write. We have two thirds times three fourths. It's not the butterfly method, so I don't want you to get confused with that. But I want you to look at two and four. Do they have anything in common? Yes, they're both even. They're both even, so they can be two. both can be divided by two. 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 So two divided by two equals one. One. Four divided by two equals two. Two. Questions on how I got that? No. See how I did that? You divided. All right. So what about three and three? One. Oh, oh you can divide them because they're both the same. You can divide them because they're both the same number. We can divide by that number. So three divided by three is one. 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 Three one. divided by three is one. So my new fractions are one over one times one over two. One times so one times one is one. One times two is two is a half. So my final answer is one half. One half. Yes, sir. This one? This one right here. From up top up here when we did three divided by three. Okay, good question. This is called cross canceling. Yes, Gage. It's kind of like, kind of like using the slide method. It's exactly like using the slide method because this is what happens. Let's say I didn't cross cancel. Two times three is six. Three times four is twelve. Twelve. And simplify one and one half. If I put six and twelve in the slide, first thing I could pull out is a two. Six divided by two is three. Twelve divided by Two is six. I can pull a three out of both of them. I get a half and a half, right? Notice one of the common factors I used was two. Didn't I use two over here? The other common factor I used was three. Did I use the common factor of three? Yes. So it's the same thing as using the slide without using the slide, if that makes sense. There's more steps using the slide than cross-canceling. Okay? All right. Now I want us, we're going to work this problem again, and you're going to write it as I do it this time. Okay? So first thing you're going to write, two-thirds, I know it's already on your paper, but write it bigger, two-thirds, times three-fourths we're going to look at two and four we said we were going to divide both of them by two so right divided by two for both of them two divided by two is one, cross that out because I'm done with it. Four divided by two is two. I'm going to cross that out because I'm done with it. Now we've got three and three. What did we say we could divide both of those by? Three. Divide them by three. 
Three divided by three is one. one. Cross that out because we're done with it. Three divided by three. One. One. We're done with it. Then we rewrite it. One over one times one over one. two equals one half. Make sure you have that written down so that you can refer back to it. If you don't understand one of those steps, you need to ask now. All right, while they're writing that, we've got three eighths over six fifteenths. Do three and fifteen have something in common? Yeah, five. My five, three. And divide both of them by three. Three divided by three is one. Fifteen divided by three is Now we look at 8 and 6. Do 8 and 6 have anything in common? They're both even. They're both even. If they're both even, what should we take out? 2. So we're going to divide both by 2. 3 and 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So my new fractions are 1 4 over 3 times 3 fifths. Do we understand where we got those numbers from? Mm -hmm. All right, one times three is three. three. Mm -hmm. Four times five is twenty. If I put three and twenty in the slide, do they have any common factors? No. No. So our final answer is three and twenty. Like I said, I could have multiplied straight across. I could have done 3 times 6 is 18, and 8 times 15 is 120. Those are bigger numbers, aren't yeah. they? Then I would have to put those in the slide and work the slide. And we would eventually get 3 over 20. Okay? So you could do either one. It's up to you. This is where you get a choice. Okay. All right, questions. All right, if you look at the next part of your notes, you have some mixed numbers. What do we have to change mixed numbers into? Improper fractions. What's the, what do we have to do? We have to go around the world. So we have to multiply then add. So we go around the world. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. Guys, y'all are asleep. 5 over 2. 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 3, 18. Is there any cross-canceling we can do here? Yeah, 5 and 5. We're not dividing. We're dividing. Y'all, if you have the same numbers, like the 5's right here, even if you don't know how to cross cancel the two and the eighteen, you can at least do the fives, and that's gonna that's gonna still help. You have the same number across from each other; they're gonna turn into a one. One every time. Two numbers across from each other. One. Okay, does everybody see that? No, not next to each other. They have to be crisscross, diagonal from each other. Okay. So if there were threes there, they would both turn into ones. 
It doesn't matter what number it is. If they're crisscrossed from each other, they're going to turn into ones. All right. Two and 18, do they have anything in common? Two, two right? They're both, they're even. both even. So two divided by two is going to be one. one. 18 divided by two is going to be two. My new fractions is one over one times nine over one. One times nine is nine. Uh, one times one is when I have a number over one, what is that equal to? No. One whole. It's going to be equal to a whole number. Because technically, nine over one is an improper fraction, right? Yeah, because. So if I, when we have improper fractions, we have to divide. One divided by nine is nine. Or 9 divided by 1, I'm sorry. No remainders. So, whenever you have a number over 1, it's just whatever the numerator is. Ms. Pittman, would you show them if you have 5 over 2 times 18 over 5, and you only cross cancel your 5s? We only cross cancel our 5s. We would have 1 over 2 times 18 over 1. 1 times 18 is 18. 18. 18. 2 times 1 is 2. That's an improper fraction, is it not? What do we have to do with improper fractions? Divide them. 18 divided by 2 is? Did we get the same answer? Yes. In the past, I have had students that would only cross cancel if they were the same numbers. So, and I mean, you can do this, but if you'll just go ahead and learn how to do, you know, cross cancel everything you can, it's going to be quicker and easier. Like I said, I'm not going to force you, but it's going to make your world so much easier. All right. Are we always going to be able to cross cancel? No. No. Sometimes you're not going to be able to. We're just stuck with big numbers. Okay? All right. Around the world. 24. 24 plus 5 is? 29. 29 over 6. 4 times 1 is? 4. Plus 1 is? 5. Is there any opportunity for cross canceling? Well, 29 and 4 have anything in common? No. no. 6 and 5? No. But yes, 30. You're multiplying. Uh, no. 6 and 5 are back to back on the number line. Can we pull anything out of them? Mm. No. So we have to do, what's 29 times 5? You have a beautiful thing called a calculator. What? 145. I'm going to write it down here. 145. And 6 times 4 is? 24. 24. We have an improper fraction. What do we do? Divide. Divide 145 divided by 24. Put it in your calculator. See what whole number pops up. 145 divided by 24. What do we get? 6 is our whole number. 6 times 24. 6 times 24. 144. What's my remainder? 1. What's my denominator going to be? What, what's my denominator been? 24. So what does my denominator have to be? So where's the only places one can go? Uh -huh. Up top with the numerator. So my final answer is 6 and 124. Could we simplify 1 over 24? No, because it's already simplified. It's already, it's, a, it's already simplified. It's as low as it can go. Questions? 
what I need you to do. Look on the back of this paper right here. Everybody turn and look. Right here. It says multiplying fractions. There's nine problems. This is your homework tonight. You gotta check to see if you did it. You go to 21st century. Guess what you need to be doing? This. You don't go to 21st century. Guess what you need to do at home? This. Okay? So. This is your homework, that back page, multiplying fractions, there's nine of them. Should be manageable, okay? All right, you can put that away.